Hello, this is Stephen Howe, and yes, we're back with another Batman 66 episode review. And today we'll be reviewing the episode Green Ice, which is see, which will be the which will be the episode which we are once again back with the frosty fiend Mr. Freeze. This time portrayed by a different actor. But before we get into that, let's get into the review. We begin our episode at a Miss Galaxy beauty pageant uh, dressing room where all the contenders are essentially being ready for their big unveiling. However, two men rush in and kidnap uh, Miss a, a contestant by the name of Miss Iceland. And on their way out, we have a look at Mr. Freeze, who is portrayed by a different actor this time and has and sports a radically different look. We then cut to police headquarters where Commissioner Gordon is informed of the men who kidnapped her, but also the man who possibly did it. Now, what I got to appreciate here is how they essentially are saying how Mr. Uh, notice how Mr. Freeze has a new head, uh, you know, a new new look because this time he's wearing a jet neck jet neck collar, which essentially is designed to keep his head cold. And this was, and I just don't know, and I th and I just like how they at least acknowledge that. While this is happening, they look through the, just as they're about to call Batman, they look at the air vent and notice Mr. Freeze is there, hiding in the air conditioning vent and uses his uh, freeze gun to freeze Commissioner Gordon, Chief O'Hara, and their entire office. But while this is happening, the dynamic duo are alerted to Commissioner Gordon's peril through the bat phone and quickly make their way down the poles. We then use the opening credits and they're driving their way there. They then get to police headquarters just in time and manage to essentially get into Miss Commissioner Gordon's office and save Chief O'Hara and Commissioner from essentially dying from sub-zero temperatures. We then cut to essentially a a press conference, kind of like they did in the movie, where the newspaper just wants to know what the hell happened. And here we get introduced to uh, Nellie Majors, who will play a huge role in this episode and its second part. Just as that's happening, Mr. Freeze has sent a giant block of green ice, which contains money inside, which the newspaper reporters perceive as essentially a bribe to keep quiet of what's happening. And this is a step Mr. Freeze's plan to ruin the image of Batman and Robin. We also reveal that he's kidnapped Miss Iceland to essentially nip, to essentially turn her body temperatures to essentially very low degrees and essentially make her his make her his wife. Essentially Mr. Freeze wants someone to you know to live with, you know, like a partner type of thing. And I think that's a really interesting plot for this character to go, and it wonders, does, did this influence the Nora character years later? However, however, we can't dine on that right now, as Mr. Freeze has two of his henchmen dress up as Batman and Robin for essentially a big caper that he plans to do. We then cut to Bruce Wayne and Dick, essentially at Wayne Manor, along with a bunch of guests having essentially uh, a, a party, a pool pa uh, essentially a pool party where the pool is dyed green um, dyed green and essentially everyone's enjoying themselves but Batman is realizing that something's odd because emerald in the underworld means green ice and just as that's happening Mr. Freeze turns up along with his lackeys dressed as waiters essentially steal everyone's goods and he ends up freezing a fellow policeman just as this is happening, the fake Batman and Robin turn up, and a fight breaks out, which Batman and Robin uh, essentially lose the battle in a hilarious way, making them look absolutely pathetic. And Mr. Freeze and his men make their escape. The fake heroes quickly uh, retreat in haste. And just but before that happened, Mr. Freeze, Mr. Freeze had forced everyone into the pool and had frozen it solid. Essentially, this whole scenario made Batman and Robin's reputation ruined. Well, makes it worse, and what's even wor and what's making it even worse is that the rumors from the Gotham City Herald have already spread, spread to this. But however, Alfred has arrived and has turned the essentially pool heater on in order to fr to you know to help everyone get out of the ice. 
While this is happening, we cut back to the Batcave, where Batman and Robin have to find Mr. Freeze's hideout immediately in order to save their reputation. If they could rescue, to get the diamonds back, take down Mr. Freeze, but also save Miss Iceland. And he, Batman, noticed himself how his, how her kidnapping has almost become secondary. As is this happening, they go through the Batcave and manage to trace Mr. Freeze to a possible hideout at the Frosty, at uh, some kind of uh, Frosty Freeze's company factory. Mr. Freeze, however, knows this and has prepared a trap. Mr. Freeze and his boys quickly arrive at the factory, just as Batman and Robin do, and a bat fight breaks out. Only for Batman and Robin to be quickly frozen by Mr. Freeze, Freeze's trusty freeze gun, and are then are placed inside, uh, in essentially the thing that makes our frosty freezes, and essentially plans to turn Batman into legit frosty freezies and that's where we end our cliffhanger for this episode with, with the cast of course gordon o'hara complete idiots buffooneries it's almost become almost a trademark i like how batman and robin's reputation is essentially playing a bit of a role in the story something really interesting and again we get to see more bruce wayne and dick grayson which for me is always really fun I'll, interesting how mayor linseed is getting a lot to do with the stories now he appeared in the Egghead episodes, he appeared in the Penguin episodes, and immediately he's now Mr. Freeze. And I like how, you know, he's a, he's a supporting character, like Warren Crane, just pops up randomly, and I really do like that. But it makes sense for a mayor of a big city to have more of a role in the story. And Harriet, Alfred, always fun to be there. They may not have, and I like how... And Harriet is not okay now. Their roles aren't really that huge in terms of progressing the story. Maybe a little bit, but not massively. But I do like how Aunt Harriet is showing some more screen time with the stories, and that's for me the way to go with that character. All the supporting characters are great, but of course we can't keep going without talking about the main villain. That's the reason why we always watch these episodes. Mr. Freeze is back again. And this time he's portrayed by a different actor, Otto Preminger. Now, Otto Preminger has made a career out of directing. He was one of the greatest directors of his day. Um, but he's also quite controversial because he was known to be quite abusive uh, to his car, uh, cast members. He's also made um, his career also playing uh, acting roles as well. And uh, according to sources, the only reason he got on this show was because uh, his, uh, either his kids or grandkids just really loved this show and he wanted, and they want, and as a result, he gladly joined and wanted to be a part of it. Now, Ultra Preminger, for me, already is a unique interpretation of Mr. Freeze. First off, he's doing it almost in complete contrast to his predecessor, George Sanders, who was more sympathetic and a more human quality to the character. This guy is almost as cold hearted. Um, and almost detached from any kind of emotional connection, <clears throat> which is ironic because he's trying to have a sort of bride, he's trying to force this woman to love him, which I think may have inspired the whole Nora character in the, you know, in the Batman animated series years later, just, I don't know. First off, and he also has the look of the character down for it. When I think of Mr. Freeze... This is who I imagine, this is what you would imagine him to look like. Not the astronaut from George Sanders' run, but more someone with a different color skin. Yeah, he hasn't, you know, that more white or bluish because he's really, really cold. Uh, jet nozzle collar, I really like. It's completely different. The reason why they had it, it was because when George Sanders was freeze, when, like I said, the more astronaut helmet, they found it difficult to film. They couldn't really hear, so he had to all dub his voice. So this was to compensate for that. I find it to be really goofy. But also surprisingly fits very well with the show. He says wild a lot, which is his catchphrase. I love the plan here to essentially have the whole city hate Batman as, you know, as everyone always hates him. It's a really good and ingenious villain plot. I, I admit it's pretty fantastic. I like, now, when it comes to the Freeze actors, well... George Sanders, uh, Auto Preminger is considered the definitive Mr. Freeze of the show, and I agree. Just that first of the look, the, his manicness, I absolutely believe that he is the. And for a while, he was my favorite Mr. Freeze. Of course, years later, I would grow more. Uh, I would have developed a soft spot for George Sanders, which is why I did a tie. I love the idea of what his plan here. It's absolutely inspiring.
absolutely. Auto Preminger is Mr. Freeze for me, and I don't uh, is Mr. Freeze for not just me, but I'm sure for many people who watch the show. It will either be between George Sanders or Auto Preminger, but it's always going to be Auto Preminger by a mile. Here we have the character uh, Nelly Majors. Now this now this episode and the one that will be next will be the only time we ever see her. Now she essentially is a newspaper reporter and plays the stereotype of, you know, not really believing in the facts and kind of manipulating them for her own benefit. She plays the role of how newspaper people are supposed to report report the facts. And to be fair, she does, but she manipulates the facts to make it look like what it is. And essentially, she cares about the headlines. The reason why I'm shouting her out is she does play a huge role in how the story goes from here. She plays a role in how the story develops and continues throughout the adventure. And she's a character you just loathe to hate. And there's really, that's all we could really say about her. She's a character that is meant to be hated, meant to be loathed, and the actress does a phenomenal job in portraying the character as I'm sure she was written, and that's all I can say. So far, Green Eyes for me is an episode I really like. It's not on the same par with the Freezer's first debut two-parter, which I feel will always be the better of Mr. Freezer's episodes, but for me so far, Green Eyes introduces us a completely different take and a completely different look on the character, something that would, I'm sure, inspire future generations of the character going forward to essentially be the closer to the more definitive look. It also shows a new character angle Mr. Freeze would use, such as him wanting to be with someone, which I'm sure would inspire generations years later. I also got to admit, I really like the idea of him hating Batman and wants everyone to hate Batman just as he feels hate. Something I don't think any villain's ever done. The first Mr. Freeze wanted to just humiliate him. This is different and it's a really interesting plot. I also like how, like, it's a differently written plot. If I could really have one fault with this, I would kind of say it's the production. Now, not to say that the sets and that aren't great. They are great. But with the first one, like, you had, like, this, um... Like, you can tell they had a really big budget for that episode, with the whole, like, in areas where you can keep cool. This kind of feels a bit lame, that they didn't do that. I'm not sure why, but that's my real gripe. I really like the angle and the story they're really telling here. The death trap is a bit too cheesy, but I can't say it's a terrible death trap, but it does feel incredibly silly, but it manages to fit so well with this show, I can't really fault it. And there we have it, Green Ice. Uh, a very okay and fun and fun episode. Join us next time, we'll review the second part to this Frosty Freezy's plan. So, until next time, the same Steven Hour, the same Steven Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.